All right, hi, and welcome back. Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome back to the legal world, the legal jungle, as we call it. So every day is a new day here. And today, if you've watched some of my prior videos, you know that I've tried to get cameras in the courtroom. You know, it's a fundamental right, really, I would say, that the courts are owned by the people, okay, by the tax buyers, by the people of the counties and the cities and the states where they're located, okay? We have state governments and federal governments, but these courts are owned by the people. Now, when you have a case, like a criminal case, like the Jody Arias case that we're talking about today, the, the, the defendants have a right to a fair trial. So there is a balancing that needs to go on uh, between having cameras in the courtroom and some unfair prejudice that may occur as a result of media. Now, we've all seen these big media storms and this and that and the other. So one thing I was trying to do for my fans, and I'm not done. I still got to fight. I got to do some work here, as you can see. But I filed a petition to get my camera in the courtroom. This is in the courtroom in Maricopa, Court of Appeals, State of Arizona, Division One, coming up on October 17th, just a few weeks down the corner. So I petitioned to get my camera in for some live streaming. I do have a page called attorneystevenews.com. And so I wanted to bring you, not to disrupt or anything like that, just to bring you the oral arguments so that you could see them, okay, to have a right to know what's going on inside the courtroom, to have a right to know a little bit about the proceedings, uh, to learn more about our criminal justice system. How do we teach our kids about the criminal justice system and maybe any potential shortcomings if they don't get a chance to watch and hear and see the judges in action and see the attorneys in action. So at any rate, uh, this is what we're trying to do. So I have some legal work of my own to do today, as you can see. Objection to Vondren's request to record oral argument. So what happened is my petition went to the attorney general and also went to Jody Ann Arias' attorneys. Remember, she was convicted of savagely, brutally killing Travis Alexander, the Mormon guy from uh, Mesa, Arizona, who was a, a, an executive in the prepaid legal services. So it's, a, it's an amazing story, not for the better, obviously, for the worse, but we simply wanted to get in and show people how the court systems work and follow through on this um, rather fascinating case, if you remember all the media around it. So here comes Miss Arias now, by and through her counsel, respectfully objecting to the request to broadcast, record, and photograph oral arguments or public meetings, public meetings, as it says, filed by Attorney Steve Vondren on September 11, 2019. Miss Arias asked the court to deny coverage because, because, of, because, of, because, not because of the wonderful things I does, apparently, but let's see if we can get this down here. Why, let's see, she says here, the court has inherent power to preserve order and decorum in the courtroom. The public has a right to be informed and reporters are free to, to report what happens in the courtroom. However, the rights of the press are not unlimited. The primary concern must be the proper administration of justice. Well, I don't plan on impeding justice in any way, shape, or form. The law favors, favors publicity and legal proceedings so far as that object can be attained without injustice to the defendant. And again, this is just one attorney trying to educate the public here. Um, so we have here the press is welcome to view a public proceeding, but the court has a duty to make sure their presence does not violate the defendant's right to a fair trial. The presence of the press must be limited when the accused might be prejudiced or disadvantaged. Trial courts must take strong measures to ensure that the balance is never weighed against the accused in our system of justice. The public has the right to watch the trial not participate in it or indicate a desired outcome. I have not indicated any desired outcome. I want, I want truth and justice to be served, okay? Um, a carnival atmosphere can be avoided because the courtroom and courthouse is subject to the control of the court. The case law addresses media involvement at the trial level in the present matter. A private person, that's me, petitioned the court to broadcast an appellate oral argument. The trial and appellate courts share the duty to preserve a defendant's right to due process. In fact, as a YouTuber, Vondren is not a credentialed journalist. Does anybody know who a credentialed journalist is? Did, was there some certificate that you have to get? I hadn't heard, I was not aware of that, okay? Um, I'm a citizen journalist is what I am. In fact, as a YouTuber, Vondren is not a credentialed journalist and not affiliated with established media outlet. Some people view that as a good thing, that I have my own channel and I'm independent. 
Um, he's not regulated in any way. Well, yes, I am. I'm regulated by the state bar, which regulates me and my conduct as in anything having to do with an attorney, aside from his members as a member of the state bar of Arizona, correct, which is a uh, substantial obligations that are put on me. So there are regulations. And by the way, is the established media regulated in any way? I'm not even sure I understand that argument. Ms. Arias request that, requests that this court maintain the dignity and decorum of the proceeding. Believe me, I would get dressed up, put a suit and tie on, don't worry. This court has already put in place a live stream of the oral argument on its official YouTube channel. Well, I reach a different audience than does their YouTube channel. Obviously, we don't have the same overlapping people. The presence of a private entity live streaming the oral argument on her appeal to an unregulated YouTube channel is not only unnecessary, but exposes Mrs. Arias appellant proceeding to potential abuse. And I'm not sure exactly how that is done. That, that, that doesn't really make sense to me. Vondren proposes no proper purpose. I do. I just told you I was going to educate people in my channel. I have over 15,000 now. For his request to broadcast the oral argument, the court should not allow a private person to portray oral arguments for entertainment purposes. As I mentioned, I'm not trying to entertain anyone. You look at my channel, it's full of videos that educate people, okay? Education, you can go look through my channel and you can easily see that. Our, our court should not sacrifice the solemnity of this oral argument for entertaining the masses. That, that is, there's no evidence of me doing anything for entertainment purposes here. The fear that the oral argument could be presented in such a way as to titillate rather than educate and inform is real. So she's coming up with some fear that I, that I do not present. The media broadcast may be presented in such a way as to titillate rather than to educate and inform. So it's okay for them, I suppose. At trial, the media unfairly portrayed Miss Arias as a stalker, a liar, crazy, and a seductress. A national talk show host criticized the defense for hiring and paying experts to testify on her behalf. The trial judge stopped watching media coverage of the trial due to media misinformation. Well, it's not my fault, and I'm not going to misinform anyone. I'm going to let the cameras roll. For these reasons, Miss Arias fears that the oral argument addressing her appeal could fall to the same treatment if this course allows a live stream broadcast of, of palpating proceedings on a private YouTube channel. Okay, so she goes on with an Arizona uh, administrative order of some sort. And then she says, Miss Arias has no evidence that Attorney Vonern has any evil intent. Thank you. I don't. Nor does she have any evidence of his intent to use the broadcast to spread false or misleading information. Correct. I'm bound by my, my attorney rules, okay? However, the fact that the Arizona Supreme Court is concerned enough about the potential for abuse that established a task force to address the matter suggests that this court should proceed with caution when addressing re requests to broadcast oral arguments. Oral arguments on appeal at the Court of Appeals are solemn and dignified events. I know I've been there. Uh, there are strict protocols that attorneys abide by while appearing in front of the appellate court. Yes, that's exactly right. There is reg rules and regulations we all must follow. This court should not allow live streaming by unregulated private parties. Again, I am regulated by the bar to turn oral argument into entertainment. I'm not. I'm doing educational for profit. No, it's just for a YouTube channel. There may be some monetization, but it's, I'm not selling videos or anything here, okay? At the profit, at the expense of the criminal justice system. No, the, the intent here is to show everybody how our criminal justice system works. That's how kids learn, okay? That's how kids learn. The courtroom is open to the public. Remote viewers can view the oral argument via the Court of Appeals live stream. Okay, well, I don't know how well they're going to actually market that link, but, you know, if you've already allowed one and you're not concerned, you're just concerned that I'm not regulated and it may be for entertainment. So that seems to be the whole crux of the argument. Um, I'll finish it off here. It is not, um, it is not unreasonable to surmise that Vondren wants to take advantage of the public's inexplicable interest. Now, where, where, where do you find evidence for that? Where do you find evidence for that? I see no evidence that this is surmising. Not only that, but if the court grants Vondren's request, it will open the floodgates 
to other private parties who wish to broadcast via live stream on other platforms such as Facebook or Twitter. It's not a bad idea. This is a good way to reach people. Now, obviously, there's going to be a limit to what they can allow in the courtroom, but the early bird gets the worm, okay? Uh, such a result would certainly impact the dignity of the proceeding, not to mention Miss Arias's right to appeal. So... I'm not getting the whole thing, but that's the motion, and I will be addressing these points. I will be filing my own motion in opposition to this and continuing to seek my right, what I believe is a right to get the cameras in the courtroom to educate the public. I disagree with many of the assertions, and this is what you do in law, people. So we file petitions. They file uh, oppositions. We can oppose their oppositions. The judge makes a ruling. We live with it. If not, I plan to be outside that day, outside the courtroom, and hopefully would not receive any objection to showing up in public. Okay, that's it. Attorney Steve, just a little inside look at our justice system. Um, and I hope you had a great day. I hope you had a great weekend and hope you're ready to just have a smashing awesome week. And I got to get going. As you can see, I've got a lot of work to do here. But I wanted you all to see this, how, how the wheels of justice spin, the things the court are going to have to consider in weighing out this motion, if it's, if it's in my favor, if it's against my favor. But we will keep you posted. The only way you're going to know is if you subscribe to this channel. Not too many channels bringing you this kind of um, information and news, things you can use, educational things. So please join us and fight for us and make sure to subscribe and we will keep as much good stuff coming as we can. If you have any great ideas, legal news that's not being properly covered, things that should be covered that aren't, let us know, drop us a message and you can find us on the web at attorneysteve.com. That's attorneysteve.com. The first name in legal services. I got to run. Lots to do. Have a great day.